Hello guys, how are you doing? Uh, I'm going to solve a very simple problem for cables and but I'm gonna solve it by using two different approaches. This is gonna be the first part, okay? So let's see what is gonna happen. Let me switch here to the cam. There you go. This is the problem that we're gonna be solving. The problem ask for determining we have this cable here and then we have to determine a the two forces, we don't know this force P1 and P2 in this part. However, let me switch this because I can't see it. Okay, now I can see it. However, uh, we know that this, this is gonna be horizontal. We have every single one of the dimensions, vertical and horizontal. So there are two possibilities for solving, or more than two, but let's say that I'm gonna use two different ways of approaching this problem. First, be completely sure what the problem is asking you. The problem, once again, is asking you for finding the forces P1. This distance is this distance here, which is 2, and this is 1.5, meaning the hypotenuse is going to be a square root of 2 squared plus 1.5 squared, that's 6.25 squared, and that will be 2.5. That will be the 6.25, that will be 2.5. That will be that distance over there. So now we have this, we can just go back and jump directly to the method of the joints and we say summation of forces in x equals zero summation of forces in x equals zero and if we do summation of forces in x equals zero I have this one 
will be negative TAB cosine beta or instead of using cosine beta if I'm going to use this uh, this part that I have here uh, the triangular ratio I can say that is 2 divided 2 because I'm looking at the horizontal divided by 2.5 2 divided by 2.5 or I can say here also remember cosine beta if you feel more comfortable using angles and um, and then you can say what is this here I said of the music that is going crazy over there so okay and then plus this one here which is going to be plus t this value so if I put this value there I have negative TAB but TAB is this 12.5 whatever I have TAB I'm going to put that times 2 divided by 2.5 plus TBC multiplied by 4 divided by square root of 17 equals 0 and from here I can solve for TBC and TBC will be 10.31 kN ok we have 2 of the ones that we needed to calculate. Uh, okay. 
Let me cut the music off because it's distracting me. Okay, we have TAB, TVC. Now we can choose to move somewhere else, and then I can move maybe to the joint C. And joint C, what what will be the unknowns? P1 is unknown, TCD is unknown, and I know this one and I know the angle. So yeah, there are two unknowns, meaning I can move to that one. So if I go to that one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep this in here so we can see it better like that. So I'm gonna move to C, the joint or we so called joint, and I'm going to have this force here which is TVC, and this angle here we call it before alpha, and we also say that alpha for our purposes, <coughs> sorry, uh, it will be 1, 4, square root of 17, that's what we said or alpha equals whatever value we had and alpha was a 14.04 so I have this one and then in this other direction I have this one which is horizontal that's one of the statements here CD remains horizontal so if that is CD TCD horizontal and then uh, I have a force here of P1. Whatever we do, there's a TC, TVC was already known from before, 10.31 kilonewton. So if I do summation of forces, for example, in Y equals zero, Y in Y, no reason. Whatever way, whatever way we do it, we have we end up with only one unknown. So if I do it with respect to Y, which is this one here, we will have. TVC multiplied by sine alpha or 1 divided by square root of 17 same thing or same difference like my son says minus P1 equals 0 and remember TVC is 10.31 calculated before so from here I can calculate P1 which is 2.5 kilonewton now I can do summation of forces in X equals 0 and then I have the X component of TVC. Remember, we did this before. Now I'm doing this. In this case, I use this, but I could have I could have say sine alpha. Now I'm going to use that as adjacent, so I can say cosine alpha, TVC, cosine alpha. But cosine alpha is also four divided by the square root of seventeen. Here plus TCD equals zero. Remember this is 10.31 which allowed allow us to calculate for TCD and TCD is going to be 10 kN. What else? What else? Now we can move to join D. If we join to mo uh, we join we move to join D joint remember it's not the joint but anyway join D And the reason I'm calling these joints and I'm applying the, an equivalent of the trusses is because these are two force members, basically, only tension or compression at the end. If you are, if this is subject to concentrated load, like that. Uh, so joint D, you will have the joint is here. This force here is TCD, which we already calculated, calculated before, 10 kilonewton. And then you have this other one here and you have P2 which we don't know how much is that and we have this angle here theta and this is T uh, DE but theta it can be the inverse tangent also of if this is the angle that I'm referring to that theta is going to be the inverse tangent of this distance which is 2.5 divided by 4 2.5 divided by 4 and that angle will be that angle will be, that angle will be, don't go anywhere, 2.5 divided by 4, inverse tangent of that is a 32 degrees, 32 degrees. Or you can use the triangle that we have been using before, this is 4, this is 2.5, this is 4, this is 2.5, so this one is going to be the square root of 4 squared is 16 plus 
2.5 is 6.25 square root of 22.25 22.25 there you go now we can establish the equation and we can say okay summation of forces in x equals zero now we have negative t cd which is 10 kilonewtons plus plus this one this component this component is going to be tde tde cosine of the angle or tde multiplied by 4 divided by square root of the hypotenuse 22.25 not the square root of the hypotenuse I mean divided by the hypotenuse and that will be it because I don't have anything else in that part equals 0 and then we can solve for TDE which is 11.79 uh, kilonewton last but not least we can say summation of forces in Y equals 0 and when we do that then I have negative P2 plus this component of TDE that component of TDE, I already calculated TDE so it's going to be plus TDE which is this multiplied by either sine of the angle or multiplied by 2.5 divided by a square root of 22.25 2.5 divided by square root of 22.25 equals 0 plug this into here and calculate for P2 P2 is 6.25 kilonewton ok now let's go back to the original problem the original problem says determine the forces P1 and P2 ok P1 calculated P2 calculated also uh, and also find the maximum tension in the cables well we calculated the, all the tensions the first tension that we calculated was TAB here 12.5 this tension here we calculate TBC 10.31 we calculated TCD 10 kilonewtons and we calculated TDE here TDE 11.79 kilonewton so the maximum tension in the cables correspond to maximum tension correspond to TAB and TAB was 12.5 kilonewton now there are two things here that you uh, that you you should know first uh, whenever you are dealing with horizontal cables with, with a cables under uh, vertical loads only the horizontal component is never going to change because there's nothing that changes basically and second the maximum tension is always going to happen wherever the tangent with the horizontal is maximum and that's going to happen when the angle is the biggest one so between beta alpha and theta the bigger angle was beta and that was the one that got a uh, that angle was uh, where are you where are you alpha here beta was here I didn't calculate beta but anyway let's calculate beta uh, inverse tangent of 1.5 divided by that which is 0.75 that's 36.87 36.87 that was the angle 36.87 you see and the angle beta was exactly this angle the angle of the cable with the horizontal which gave us the maximum tension anyway these are just some things you don't need to know if you're going to solve this problem by joint but now let's check the second part and see what happened with the second part keep watching